everything's right Everything's just right Sleep my darling, don't you cry I'll be here when the sun rises Sleep my darling, don't you cry My son was 19 years old when he passed away on January 8th. My husband and I woke up at three in the morning and found him barely breathing on the sofa. In everybody's life, there comes a time where you have to decide, am I gonna do drugs or not? For most of us, that decision is made in the moment usually by a friend telling us that it's going to be really fun. Aaron's story was typical. Um, young man, successful, high school athlete, talented uh, high school football player. Aaron overdosed on Oxycontin and prescription pills October 9th, 2005. And he was in a coma for three weeks. We were planning his funeral. Because of the overdose, he is now a quadriplegic. He understands everything and he communicates by using his hands and fingers, one finger for yes and two fingers for no. Making wrong decisions will ruin your life. I almost died in 2009. My name is Asia Armour. I went to a private high school as a varsity cheerleading. But when I was 18, I was overdosed on ecstasy. I was in a coma for two months, had complete organ and respiratory failure, and I couldn't walk, talk, and do simple things like put on chapstick. I was in a wheelchair for five months. I was in a cane for three, and a walker for two. I'm two years into my rehab and I'm still going through rehab. I can't dance, I can't run, and I can't, my speech is slow. People always talk about how great drugs make you feel, but no one ever talks about how serious the consequences are of taking drugs. I thought I was invincible, that nothing would ever happen to me, but it did. My entire life has changed because of the choice I made to swallow a tablet of ecstasy. No matter what, it's not worth it. I was having fun with my friends one night, and that one night changed my entire life, and I'm young. It happened when I was 18, and I have to live with the choices I made for the rest of my life. I have problems speaking. I have a difficult time getting a job because of my speech. I lose balance, I run into walls. My arm can't bend all the way. It's really not worth it in the long run, so. Just don't do it no matter how cool someone says it is, because in reality it's not. Before I started using, I was extremely involved in high school. I was on student government. I was a varsity song captain. I was in um, you know, philanthropic league. I graduated high school with a very high GPA and scholarships and uh, you know, with the um, honors in leadership. I was very, very involved. You know, I've, I found a uh, alcohol and ecstasy when I was around 17 years old and uh, it took about three months until I was doing heroin. My disease escalated quickly. I wanted to try everything and anything. They all had a different effect. They all allowed me to feel and do different things and uh, you know I, I was curious. I was very undereducated. I did not know what I was getting myself into. I quickly became very dependent on heroin. A daily user um, you know, I tried moving, I tried, you know, trying different friends, different areas to see if maybe that would help fix the situation. 
um, about three months after I started using heroin, I entered into my first of 16 rehabs. Heroin must be the problem. Not me, of course, I'm not the problem. It's gotta be the heroin. So I'll switch from heroin to meth. I think I did three or four rehabs in that year, three rests, and the third time I caught my first prison term. I was a cheerleader, soccer player on like a national league, and I ended up getting kicked off the cheerleading squad. Um, a few months later, I ran away from home, you know, cause, and I put a lot of blame on my parents. I got arrested again um, for runaway truancy. I mean, I was skipping school a lot. All sorts of really bad things happened, but none of them in my mind were a sign that I needed to stop. And I started doing pills. I loved pills. I loved like Oxycontin and uh, morphine pills, and I would do them all the time, smoke weed, drink, um, and pretty soon that started to progress to the point where I couldn't go to school anymore, you know. I could never go to my classes at University of Georgia, hardly uh, didn't, uh, kept withdrawing. And I would say, no, next semester, next semester, I just need a break, you know. I always get annoyed when we're talking about marijuana because that was my drug of choice. And what I see too often to this day, especially, is that it's so minimalized, like it's not a big deal, it's not a problem. It's the gateway drug. It's, it's, it's between alcohol and heroin that marijuana is there so prevalent. You know, I used to think it was a bunch of crap, you know, the whole, the whole part with, oh, gateway drugs, alcohol, marijuana and stuff, but it's true. I mean, all the drinking led me to, with a needle in my arm. Between the age of 13 and 18, um, I went from pot to alcohol to prescription drugs such as Valium and Xanax, um, Hydrocodone, Vicodin, that type of thing, Percocet. Um, and at 18, uh, a friend of mine introduced me to heroin. I've been playing football my whole entire life, so I've kind of been a jock, if you want to, if you want to call it that. I love sports, I love being active. I had good, good people surrounding me, which was, which was awesome. People telling me, you're gonna go far, you're gonna do things, which was something I needed. And I think we all need that. But it was around junior year that I started uh, experimenting with, drug, with, with uh, marijuana. I started smoking pot when I was 16. Senior year came around and um, football season got done and, and my friend was like, hey, you wanna go to a rave? And I'm like, a rave? What? I'm like, no, that's, that's too crazy for me. Well. Two, two months later, I ended up going to this rave and taking ecstasy for the first time. Completely changed, changed my perspective on, on life. I always knew I, I, um, I shouldn't be doing this stuff. They, a lot of them start with just the marijuana. Typically people will you know, start, with the, start with the pot and progress further into the pills. It's devastating. It's devastating our, 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 our young people. This is going to rob you of yourself. I didn't think girls like me went to prison. I'm from South Orange County. I was 21 years old. You know, I was a good student. I went to college. I don't belong in prison. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anyone who'd been to prison, especially not girls. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was a big eye opener for me. At first, just smoke, or smoking weed, drinking, taking pills when I could get them, and ended up overdosing um, multiple times ended up in rehab when I was 14 and ultimately I got hooked on heroin and was shooting heroin for two years. I, um, I was able to maintain college for a year and then once my using got serious I lost control basically. I, I was failing all my classes, I wasn't showing up for family events, I basically drove my car till it blew up, I lost all my jobs that I had had. Um, I was in an abusive relationship with my ex-boyfriend who I used with and to me the biggest thing I lost was myself. To anyone out there who's considering doing drugs because they want, you know, a sense of identity with people, it's not the way to do it because no one is who they really are when they're high and, and you're reaching for this sense of I belong, I belong, but you never, never quite get there. Little did I know that trying to escape reality through drinking and drugging was the most miserable path that I was setting up for myself. As the whole purpose of me drinking and using the way I was was because I wasn't fitting in. But little did I know that the more and more I drank, the more I used, the further apart from society, the further apart I was pulling myself from fitting in with these people anyway.
I started using Oxycontin at 15 years old and uh, before I knew it I couldn't stop. Um, I, uh, I like to say my addiction robbed me of my morals and my ethics and you know I stole thousands and thousands of dollars from my parents. I wrecked cars, um, I wrecked relationships, I, uh, I traumatized my family. Um, you know something I today I'm not comfortable with but back then I didn't care you know and um, I uh, I just couldn't stop and it got to the point where um, I wanted to die but uh, you know I couldn't do it myself um, it was a uh, it was a miserable existence um, and uh, yeah I just couldn't stop at 17 years old I ran away from home and I got, I was living in a drug dealer's house and um, I, uh, you know, I, I was about two weeks away from home. My mom had found out where I was from a friend and she drives to the house and I'm sitting in my car and I'm, I'm cooking up a, a fix. At this point I was shooting it, um, IV, Oxycontin, and uh, I'm cooking up a fix and my mom sees me and she opens the car door. And she grabs me, she hasn't seen me in two weeks. Um, you know, she's terrified, she's scared, she missed me. And she, she goes to grab me and, and the most important thing in my life at that point was my, my, my fix, my drugs. Um, and so I hit reverse and uh, my mom got trapped underneath the car. And uh, you know, I, I just drove off and I had no idea if she was okay. Um, but I didn't care, you know. I just, I just wanted to get high. Um, and and that night I, I got home. You know, I was staying somewhere else at that point. I got home, and I said, maybe I got a problem. This is going to make your life a living hell. You know, after high school, it just kind of all, I just went downhill fast, and it went, I went, uh, it was just a downhill spiral from there. I just went out of control really fast, and I was just like running amok, like just walking the streets for days, like not showering, not eating, not doing anything. And, um, you know, I ended up getting hit in the head with a crowbar and um, split my head open. I was running through like Santa Ana with like, like blood all over my face. And like, that's where like the drugs took me. That's where that lifestyle took me. I got arrested for grand theft. Um, went to jail. That case was discarded. Then uh, I got arrested again. Went to jail for that. That stuck on my record, and uh, you know it sucks because I have trouble finding like work and stuff. And it's just like I don't know. It just really stunted my growth, like as a person. Like um, it stunted like my mental growth and like my emotional growth. So, it really sets you back like I have a record now that's just it's too much it's so hard for me to get a job and stuff and like it might sound like a good idea at the time but in the long run it's just definitely gonna screw you over because I mean I've been arrested three times put in jail three times um, I've OD'd over 15 I just stopped counting after 15 times it robs them of their very essence of morality and decency a heroin addict Someone that's addicted to pills will steal your wallet and help you look for it. This is going to make your family hate you. There's no happy ending to that. There's no happy ending to that life. You know, you're just going to continue to lie, cheat, and steal to the people who you claim you love. And there's only so many years of abuse that your family and friends are able to handle. You know, as your tolerance goes up, you start to regain a little bit of consciousness and you have to get more loaded so you don't think about all the people you're hurting and how much you're hurting yourself. You have to stay high so that you don't care. Otherwise, you can't live with yourself. The potency of a drug such as Oxycontin or Opana uh, is uh, uh, more powerful than heroin. These drugs were developed uh, initially for the oncology or cancer patient. These were not intended to be drugs to be used by everyday individual for moderate pain. I hurt my knee playing basketball and I got introduced to prescription pills and it was like a light switch. That's where I really kind of understood the disease concept of addiction was that instant craving and that allergic reaction that I had to opiates and I eventually got into benzodiazepines, Xanax, 
And uh, for the last three years, I've been battling with that. I eventually lost my condo. My wife divorced me. I've overdosed nine times. And to be here is not easy, but honestly, I feel I should be dead. And that if I could have gone back and not started and not built that arrogance would have been, I don't know where I'd be now. The first thing I hear from people is, it's not gonna happen to me. You don't think it's gonna happen to you? It will happen to you. It grabs you and it entices you and it's hard to pull away from. I had always heard like about drugs and about the consequences, but I never thought that that would happen to me because I lived in a safe neighborhood and the kids that I did drugs with were normal kids on the you know basketball team and got straight A's. When I was a little kid, if you'd asked me, I mean, I never thought it was gonna end up that way. It just happened and then once you're in it, you don't know how to get out of it. And I never thought it would come to this. You know, I, I just was a girl who wanted to have fun, you know, and, and though that lasted a while, it progressed to the point where I felt hopeless. When you can stop, you don't want to. And then when you do want to stop, you can't. I just couldn't get myself to stop. If you choose to go down this path and take these pills, You'll, you'll have a tragic ending, either a tragic life of becoming an addict with the disease of addiction that you'll have to fight the rest of your life, or you can die, or you can end up like Aaron, having the challenges that he has every day because sometimes you don't die. People that have never done a drug in their life take one drug, and we're talking about drugs that with one use can alter your brain chemistry to where you have to have that drug, period. It can happen to anybody. And by doing it one time, one time, that could be one too many. What it became was dependency. What it became was, at 14, being on the street. What it became was losing absolutely everything that I had. I became a junkie at 14. I started my criminal career at 14. I've done an accumulation of five years in jail and in prison. My addiction led to numerous car accidents, numerous crimes, and I hurt a lot of people that I didn't think I was gonna hurt. In the midst of it, I had a child. I had my child taken from me because of my addiction. Everything that I thought was an amazing drug or an amazing life wasn't. The people that brought me around were not my friends. The coolness I thought I had because I was on them was not cool. I just wanted to fit in. I didn't, feel, I didn't feel like I was normal. I always felt like I was different and I knew that the drug was gonna make me feel different and it did, but then it took everything from me. I know what it's like to sit in a cell for 24 hours a day for two and a half straight years without seeing light. I know what it's like to be told when I can go take a bath, take, eat, when I can go to the bathroom. My freedom was taken from me because I chose to do what I thought was going to bring me freedom and what I thought was going to make me feel good. It led me to a cell. I missed my son's first steps. I missed everything. And if there's anything I can say about using it, it uses you. You don't use it. That's what it did to me. It, it used me until I was nothing. Aaron, did you want to stop using drugs? One yes, two no. Bring your hand away. When the time came that you wanted to stop using drugs, could you? One for yes, two for no. And I think that's the most important thing that kids need to understand is that um, Oxycontin, ecstasy, and all the hardcore drugs and pills that you're taking change your brain so dramatically quickly that you become an addict. Maybe not the first time, maybe not the fifth time, but it's not if, it's when. And even when someone like Aaron wants to stop using, it's very, very difficult to stop, even with help. These are respiratory depressants. They cause the brain to, to, to tell the lungs to stop breathing. You're at risk for having loss of oxygen to the brain. You're at risk for vomiting and breathing in or aspirating the vomit and obstructing your lungs, again leading to loss of oxygen to your brain. And so there are many kids on life support, there are kids that have died, there are kids that are, are uh, unfortunately scarred for life. And if I had one word to tell a teen, I would say just say no, stay away from these things. 
Nobody ever said that this is gonna kill you. I've lost six friends to overdoses in the past less than a year. And uh, that was heartbreaking for me. And even after that, that still wasn't enough for me to stop. Before I knew it, I'm getting phone calls from my friends. Uh, just heartbreaking phone calls, letting me know that one of my best friends died from an overdose. It's been this pillow upon that just creeps up on, on kids. And uh, they just, they die when they're in their sleep. You know, I've personally lost about close, uh, about five really close friends to this. They were intended to be taken as a pill coated with a material which dissolved over a period of time and then released the substance slowly. Now, kids and adults have uh, understood that if they remove the layer, the skin of the pill, by either scraping it off with a razor blade or using a hose clamp and grating it or wiping off the coating of Opana, then all of a sudden you've taken a time-release drug and made it into an immediate release drug that is extremely potent. Even if they're cut in half or cut in quarters to share, that intensifies the, uh, the problem because you've now removed the time-release factor by cutting the pill in half. A lot of my friends started dying from, from the Oxycontin and then from, from shooting the heroin. And um, I lost my best friend. Uh, he died in my hands um, from a, a, what we call a hot shot of heroin. It was heroin that was poisoned. And, um, and that really didn't stop me. It really didn't phase me, you know. I was, uh, I think I was so deep, so lost. My soul was pretty much gone. I see the people that are still alive, but I know so many that don't make it to our program, that don't make it to treatment, that don't make it to a 12-step meeting, that die before they ever get there. 80% of the people that I started getting loaded with are either dead, in jail or still out there doing it. Um, none of those people are successful. None of them have, fa they may have started families, but have all, you know, that's all gone by the wayside. Out of 15 friends back home, probably five of them are dead and, and the other 10 um, are still doing exactly what I was doing. Most people can't kick this thing. You know, it's really life or death, you know. And it's like, it's serious and, uh, I lost like a lot of friends to this. Now if it doesn't kill them, it can certainly give them brain damage. So to live a life in a wheelchair, unable to speak, unable to communicate, unable to go to college, unable to function, is a very, very tragic loss. No one meant to die. My son had a, a marijuana issue, big time. He loved his marijuana. It, he had anxiety and the marijuana was no longer helping him. He had more anxiety because of the weed that he smoked. He'd have to wake up in the morning and go around the corner and smoke a joint before starting his day. The weed was no longer helping, so a friend says, here, take a quarter of this pill. That pill was called Opana. Jared didn't want that route. He swore over and over to me that marijuana would not lead to pills. And the pills, the marijuana was no longer helping him, so he did turn to Opana. Addiction devastates the entire family. It, it takes over the, the entire family. Who knows what they could have done with their lives. They had, these kids had the brightest futures ahead of them and um, it's been taken away. My son will never have the chance to celebrate his 21st birthday. He'll never have the chance to have a, have a girlfriend. He never had a girlfriend. He'll never have the chance to get married, have kids and just live life to its fullest, like you should be. I'm here to save lives, and I hope that each and every one of you take this seriously and never try it, never start, because once you start, you are hooked. Don't take pills. Pills kill. One pill can kill. No one set out to become a drug addict. If I could take it all back, I definitely would because this has brought me to some nasty places that I would never want to be. If I could go back and talk to myself um, right when I started to figure out about drugs, I guess I would say to reach out more. I feel like I distance myself from my family a lot. I feel like if I would have had a close relationship with my family or kept doing the things that I love to do, kept doing soccer, kept staying in sports, um, 
and not switched my friends. If I would have just kept hanging around with the people that I was hanging around with, the people that, you know, like when I fell off and got into drugs, they stayed on with getting good grades and, um, you know, pursuing their life in sports. And that's probably my biggest regret is that I didn't pursue those things and I lost a lot of time in my life because of it. It's not worth it, you know. It's absolutely not worth it. If I could fast forward my life and look where my life would go, um, from the ni first night I tried it, which was just a party, it was just fun, we're just teens having a good time, um, and, and see where my life went, I never would have done it. I absolutely never would have done it. It's just not right. It's not... It's not the life that we're supposed to live. We're not supposed to be doing this stuff to our bodies. The message I want to leave is there's hope. There are, there's a community now that are out to help. Those of you, if we can reach one person that's here watching the film that says, this is my story, this is what I'm doing, and I don't know where to go. There, there are people out there, there are communities, there are rehab programs, there are individuals that you've heard on this tape that are success stories. And that's the message we want to leave with, with you, is there is success out there. You're not alone, and there is hope. It's too late for Aaron, but it's not too late for you. Remember Aaron, and remember to make a good choice so you can follow your hopes and dreams. When the time comes for you to decide, what are you gonna do?